Before we start this tutorial, I want to make an announcement that I've published a new Skillshare class and this time I'll be painting a raspberry cake slice. I've been getting a lot of requests for food illustrations and I prefer to post them on Skillshare where I can turn it into a more detailed and longer class divided into shorter lessons since my food illustrations tend to be a bit more complex in comparison to what I post on YouTube. So when I do post food illustrations on YouTube like this one, it will end up getting sped up more than my classes since I have to limit the length of my videos in order to keep producing videos constantly every week. Skillshare is also ad-free and all the classes including my class has subtitles in German, English, Spanish, French and Portuguese. So if you guys are interested in taking this class and you've never been a member yet, you can go to the link in my description box for a free trial. Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting this cup of hot chocolate. I'm going to get right into painting for this one because I lost most of the footage that I was filming when I was drawing it out. I remember the footage being 27 minutes long before I stopped it to film this part of the sketch when I transferred it and I couldn't find it anywhere. At the same time though, I think I'm kind of relieved because the painting portion turned out to be very long for this one. But like usual, I'll have the outline to this painting available in my coffee shop. So that's the sketch. I also sketched out the reflection of the cup to make it easier for me to indicate the placement of the colors. And before we paint, let me just go over the colors. This is Chinese White by Holbein. Titanium Gold Ochre by Schmincke, New Gamboge by Daniel Smith, Crimson Lake by Holbein, Windsor Red by Windsor Newton, Burnt Umber by Holbein, Indigo by Schmincke, Graphite Grey by Daniel Smith, and Bleeproof White by Dr. Paige Martins. Before we begin the painting though, let me just show you the reference image that I use for this painting. I've seen this picture for a while now and I just love everything about it. The colors, the composition, even the design of the cup and also the reflection on the cup. Of course the setup and how it's laid out also helps with the Christmas atmosphere, but I'm only going to paint the main subject here. As I was sketching, I realized that only having the cup wasn't enough to make this painting as jolly looking, so I decided to incorporate the ginger cookie on the right as well. But since snowflakes are quite difficult to draw in general, I simplified it and turned mine into a star-shaped cookie instead. For the painting, I first painted the reflections on the cup as indicated on the sketch. I used a mixture of indigo with crimson lake and Chinese white to create a light purple and I used a thicker consistency without Chinese white on the right hand side. Then on the left, I used a mix of Windsor red with Chinese white to create the pinks for the reflections. I'm going to do the same thing for the right hand side and also at the bottom. I'm just breaking down those reflective shapes so I can work in smaller areas. You can approach this a different way by doing a full light wash first and then keep on layering the slightly darker tones. But when I do this, I tend to forget the areas which are reflective and which areas I have to have a different tone of hue because it is quite a high reflective surface and there's a lot going on for the design of the cup already. However, how you go about this is completely up to you and your capabilities when it comes to painting reflective surfaces. As for me, I like to look at the surface area as individual shapes from the reference image and I simplify those shapes to apply it to the painting by using different tones and tints of the reds according to the reference image. As you can see, I'm painting around the design of the cup since I want to leave it white just like the reference image it would be much easier and less time consuming if you have masking fluid and you can place the masking fluid on the stars and the writing joy so you can actually just paint over it instead of having to go around those tiny little details for the overall color of the cup itself, as you can see from the reference image, if we're not referring to the reflective surface, you can see that the light is coming from the left and that the left side has a bit more warmth to the red. So for the left side, I'll just be using 
the Windsor Red by itself, whereas on the right for the shadow, I use a mix of Windsor Red with Crimson Lake and Indigo to darken the red. On the left here, I use a thick consistency of Windsor Red and might also have some traces of the previous mix with a little bit of the Crimson Lake and Indigo, but it doesn't matter too much since there's a lot of the Windsor Red already mixed into it. And I'm using a very thick consistency here to cover that huge area since I know that there are no reflections on that part of the cup. Since I've used the thick consistency of the Windsor Red on the left, you can see how vibrant the color is. So now I want to balance out the darker colors on the right hand side for the shadows. And I'm using a thick consistency of Windsor Red Crimson Lake with a bit of indigo. I also switched my smaller brush here to paint the smaller details on the reflections. Now that I've covered the whole side of the cup, I'm going to add the finer details of the reflection and I'm also going to increase the vibrancy to balance out the rest of the cup because it's looking quite weird since the reflective area is very light in comparison to the rest of the cup. So for those light areas, I'm going to glaze more or less the same color on top of it in a light to medium consistency to balance it out. Everything is relative to each other, so once you've worked on certain areas, others might look too light in comparison. This is why we need to always go back and forth to make sure everything is well balanced in terms of value and saturation. I'm going to treat the reflective surface on the bottom the same way. I'm using a medium consistency of Windsor Red and I'm just going to spread it out to the left side of the cup whilst the right hand side is a little bit lighter as you can see from the reference image. But at the bottom right, I want it to be much darker so I use a thicker consistency here. I'm also going to line the bottom left using the same color and add some additional details on top. Here I did another glaze because I felt like I needed to push up the vibrancy further but it turned out a bit too dark so while the surface is still wet I'm just going to take off the excess paint with tissue. Next I'm going to work on the form of the cup. Even though I've placed all the reflective areas down, I felt like it still looks flat as a whole because the contrast and value is not as distinct as I want it to be. So here I'm going to build on the darker values on the right hand side by using a thicker consistency of Windsor Red Crimson Lake and Indigo. Now that I'm quite happy with the gradual progression of the value from the left to the right, I'm going to work on the rim of the cup. Firstly, I'm going to paint using this really dark red for the inner part of the cup. And as for the rim, I'm going to use a thick consistency of Windsor Red to just line the top area while leaving out parts that I've drawn out as the highlights. Here I'm going back to the dark red again to separate the top part of the rim and the side of the cup. So I'm just going to line the edge. 
I'm just going to wait for the rim to dry now and move on to the handle. I'm going to first paint the large highlight at the bottom of the handle by using the purple mix in a thin consistency with the bottom being slightly darker than the top. And as for the top part of the handle, I'm just going to paint the outer face of the handle first using a medium consistency of red. And then I just want to add the really dark red in between the rim of the cup and the handle to separate those two areas. Here I want to increase the vibrancy of the red so I just added a thicker consistency of Windsor Red while still leaving out the reflective areas as white and I'm also going to paint the sides of the handle using the same color. As I get towards the bottom, I want to darken the red, so at the bottom, I use the dark red mixture from Windsor Red, Crimson Lake, and Indigo. Going back to the top part of the handle, here I'm using a clean damp brush just to pull the color from the surrounding area. This way, the reflection will have a little bit of that red and also a soft edge. Now I'm going to go over the handle using the dark red again, this way I can separate the sides from the top. Finally, I'm going to paint the inner face of the handle. At the bottom, I use the dark red and at the top, I use a thick consistency of Windsor Red. While I go around the highlighted area that I painted earlier, I also left out a bit of reflective area at the top. And after the thick consistency red has dried up, I'm going to use a clean damp brush to soften the edges and pull the color inwards just like what we did for the top part of the handle. If some parts of the edges need to be a bit sharper, I'll just go over the colors again using a thicker consistency for those specific areas. And after that, I just use a clean down brush again to apply the same method for the rim of the cup. Moving on to the gingerbread man, now I just want to paint the base color using a mix of burnt umber, crimson lake, and quin sienna. Here I'm using quite a lot of paint and this was a mistake because the gingerbread man turned out too dark and burnt looking as the final result. So I would suggest for you to make the base color a bit lighter and in a thinner consistency than what I'm using here. This way you can slowly build up the layer and leave out those light areas so there's more depth and form to your cookies. In my painting, the gingerbread man is facing the opposite direction to the reference image. This is also where I miscalculated the color because now the front face of the gingerbread man has to be in more shadow and it will be darker than the left side because the light is coming from the left. So here I'm painting on another layer of the same brown except for the left side where it should be lighter. For the cookie at the bottom, I decided to paint the sides first since I accidentally made it too dark on the top. So here I'm using a thinner consistency to paint the sides, then I'm going to wait for that to dry and paint on the darker brown for the front face of the cookie. This time I added a bit of new gamboge in the mixture to brighten up the brown slightly. I also switched to my smaller brush for this just to make it easier since there are very small areas that I want to leave white. And just like the cup, it would be much easier if you have masking fluid and you can use the masking fluid on those small areas so you can just paint over the top of everything and then peel it off later. I feel like I need to increase the contrast of value from the side to the front face of the gingerbread man so I'm going to go back in with the same brown mixture. This time I'm using my small brush and dotting the paint in. This way I can create an uneven texture on the gingerbread man to make it look more like a cookie.
I'm just going to paint this texture all around and as I get towards the bottom of the cookie near the marshmallows I want to add a darker value by adding more burnt umber into the mixture and using a thicker consistency in terms of application I'm still going to apply it the same way by dotting it in and as I get towards the top I'm just going to soften the edges using a slightly damp brush but also still tapping my brush I'm also going to add shadows around the icing on the gingerbread this way the eyes the mouth and the rest of the decorative elements will pop out a little bit more giving a three-dimensional look I'm also going to do the same thing for the star cookie and I just want to mention for the shadows of the icing because the light is coming from the left the shadows would most likely be on the right hand side and at the bottom of the icing design Because the star cookie is placed below the cup, the side visible on the left at the bottom of the cookie will be in shadow so I'm using a darker brown with more burnt umber in the mixture. After that, I'm going to add on the shadows for the icing just like what we did for the gingerbread man. For the color though, because the base color is quite dark already and adding more burnt umber won't really do anything, I need to increase the value in terms of the color. So I added indigo into the dark brown mix to darken it further and create something that is almost black. I'm also going to apply this to the right hand side of the gingerbread man so the right hand side looks darker than the left. I'm going to leave the cookies for now and move on to the marshmallows. For this, I'm going to use a very, very thin consistency of graphite gray. And I'm just going to indicate the areas in shadow. So I'm dividing the light and dark, the light being the white of the paper and anything in shadow being this really light gray color. Since the light is coming from the left, I want the right hand side as well as the bottom parts of the marshmallows, including the marshmallows which are under and hidden away to be painted with this grey. If you guys have been following me for a while, you guys will know that when I'm painting light objects, I always like to mix different hues for the shadows. So this time I'm using a really light consistency of titanium gold ochre and I'm going to paint on parts of the shadow using this color. For the marshmallows underneath, I want to increase the value so I'm going to use a thicker consistency of the yellow mixed with a bit of burnt umber. I'm going to keep building on the value, this time I'm going to use a mix of Crimson Lake, Burnt Umber and a bit of New Gamboge. I'm going to use this color to further build the value for the marshmallows underneath which are hidden and I'm painting this on parts of the corners where the darkest areas of the marshmallows will be. For some of the shadows on the marshmallows that I've already painted with the thin consistency of graphite grey, I decided to extend it a bit further using this brown in a very light consistency, especially for the marshmallows on the right hand side. Here I'm going to still build on the value by using a thin consistency of the same brown mix with added graphite grey. And I'm going to paint this again around the corners just to define the shapes of the marshmallows further. Next, I'm going to paint the icing on the gingerbread man as well as the star cookie. For this, I used the same brown mix as I used for the marshmallows but I added titanium gold ochre and I'm using a very thin consistency of this. To paint the shadows, I'm using my small brush and I'm using a light load so I can control the flow of the color and I'm placing it on the right hand side of the icing. Thank you. 
I only want to paint this very lightly on the icing because the icing should be white and once I'm done I'm going to move on to make the shadows for the design of the cup by using a mixture of Windsor Red with a bit of indigo. Just like the cookies, I'm placing the shadows on the right hand side of the stars and this will make the stars look like it's sculpted on top of the cup instead of it looking flat. After that, I'm going to add a bit of shadow to the white part of the stars. For this, I use a very thin consistency of a purple mix of Crimson Lake and Indigo. After that, I'm going to add graphite grey to the purple mix to paint the cast shadow underneath the cup. I am going to soften the sides using a clean damp brush and just use whatever was left on my brush. And then I'm going to build on the value near the cup by using a thicker consistency of the same color mixture. After that, I'm going to go back to the marshmallows again to build on the values further and to make the marshmallows look more three-dimensional. I added burnt umber to the red mix that was already in my palette and I'm painting the corners with a medium to thick consistency of that brown. Then I'm going to add titanium gold ochre to the grey of the shadow and paint this on parts of the marshmallows again to build the form on those individual marshmallows. I think I'm fairly happy with the marshmallows so I'm going to do final adjustments to the reflections on the cup and to balance out the overall value. While I was doing this, I realized I forgot to paint the shadows for the Ride and Joy. So I'm just doing that by using the same method as how I painted the shadows for the stars. For the dark red, I use a mix of Windsor Red with Indigo. And as for the writing itself, I used the purple mix from Crimson Lake and Indigo. This time I also pulled some of the red from the cup. And this is the completed painting and this will also work well as a Christmas card design if you still have time to quickly make one. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!